this is the historical function of the piano in a rhythm section, in a dance band, in a show band, in a polka band, in the early days of jazz kind of band. Umpa, pure and simple. The left hand would be doubling with a tuba or a bass player. Right hand would be doubling with a banjo. The drummer would be going through with what drummers do. Sometimes in the 1920s, the pianist, for a tempo slower than this, would be playing this sort of thing. 4-4 four, four in the right hand, 2 in the left. That's the way they were actually published in some of the old dance band arrangements of that time. But, of course, uh, jazz suggests that things be loosened up and that individual players be given opportunities to change things around. So the um, pianist very often would uh, perhaps keep this stuff going with the left hand with the rhythm section, but in the right hand put in some doodles. Very much like he would do if he were playing solo piano altogether. But you have the option of dropping out and re returning to the rhythm section maybe doing the doodles for points of heightened excitement. Then the pianist might not play in rhythm all the time. He might do tenor melodies. Say the horn was playing, and by the way, the name of this tune is Indiana. All in the interests of keeping the thing going and building up the excitement in an ensemble. All the horns playing together contrapuntally, the pianist doing his bit. The bass player would play along very often in two beat in the early days and then walking around in four. He might or might not always be coinciding correctly with the pianist's left hand. In those days bass players were playing acoustically, couldn't hear them anyhow. And since the uh, recordings weren't of much higher technology either, the entire band would drop out for the piano solo. Suppose an arrangement goes piano only. And everybody would come back in again after 16 or 32 bars. Old records actually were made that way. The great break happened when Count Basie and the swing rhythm section appeared on the scene in the early 1930s. The piano no longer needed to dominate. The bass player would be walking on the bottom, the guitar would be playing with him. The drummer would be doing his Joe Jones thing. Kind of thing like that. Basie would be doing... If you hear him without the rhythm section, it's surprisingly minimalist. Still, he might do a, a tenor melody. Remember, everybody's swinging underneath the pianist, who is essentially decorating, except for moments when he might join in the rhythm section to really get things pushed, like... extra beat like that. Also a swing thing, but it's doubtful whether he'll keep this up for too long. Mostly like maybe. Now, in the bebop period, we had yet another revolution. The first of all, the time was always 4-4.
and the piano, the guitar was largely omitted from the uh, first bebop rhythm sections. It's come back in, but sometimes a little uncertainly. You're not quite sure, and he's not quite sure of his function, in, in my opinion. Anyhow, the pianist would comp, which is a term that means he would drop in accents here and there, uh, out of time and usually off the beat. Okay, let's go back to Indiana. Uh, we'll put it in Charlie Parker's key in A flat. And the pianist. Doo -doo 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 one, 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 one. Uh, <laughs> now, even that began to be a little bit too lush in harmony, because piano bebop pianists uh, tended to strip it down to uh, fewer notes. well, how does he know where to put all those accents if they're so arbitrary? Well, um, very often if it's a good pianist and he's experienced with what the soloist is doing behind whom he's comping, he'll simply watch, the, watch and see where the breath is. If the player goes he's going to breathe somewhere. You try to put in a beat there, if possible. It doesn't no major sin if you don't get it quite right, but around that time, around that point in the progression of the uh, of the horn player who's being accompanied. You want to hit where the chord, where the harmony really changes for an important thing. But you can lay out a lot of it. You can lay out a couple of bars. Maybe the drummer is putting in bo various bombs and things. And the harmony itself was changing. It was no longer this. No longer that nice uh, circle of fifths kind of harmony. The boppers went this way. Chromatic harmony rather than around the circle. And the bebop uh, function of a piano player in the rhythm section is essentially what we still do even now, unless you're playing old, older kind of jazz, obviously. But it's uh, it became the standard of rhythm section players, and that still goes on today, even though there may be other things that are required in any given performance.